morning, good morning, let's get ready for the show. Hi, my friends! It's Crafty Wednesday, and it's the 24th of February! <laughs> Time flies, friends! Time flies! And I have a prayer for you today. Put those prayer hands together. It's under our friendship category. I have quiet friends, noisy friends, funny ones, and sad. Many friends, few friends, sensible and mad. Good friends, naughty friends, tall friends, and short. Thank you, God, for giving friends of every sort. Sometimes it's not easy to make friends, dear God. Help me by begin, help me begin by being friendly to others, right? That's the first step, making a friend. Okay, guys, be right back for a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I'm back, and we're about to read something from our book, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Are you ready? This one's called it's an ugly day. Ugly is not the best word, right? But sometimes it feels like an ugly day. It's an ugly day made of muggly gray. It's a sit down by the fire and be snuggly day. It's a cloudy day and a dowdy day. It's a play some Chinese checkers read out loud day. It's a day to cuddle up with a chocolate cookie, hook a rug or knit. Cause it's an ugly day made of muggly gray. It's a better wear your sweater and be snuggly day. If we pop up some corn and have some cinnamon toast, I'd say we'd make the most of an ugly day. We can always make the most of an ugly day, friends. Even though I don't really love that word, I guess it means it's kind of a gray, rainy, dreary sort of day. We can always find something to do on those kinds of days. And I think Mr. Rogers came up with some good ideas. Here's a picture of them having cookies, hot chocolate, playing Chinese checkers, eating popcorn, and just kind of hanging out, spending some time together. There are no ugly days, right friends? We make the best of them. Be right back. Friends, are you ready to do some handwriting? Okay. If you want, you could have your sensory tray ready with something in it, whether it's rice or popcorn or couscous, <laughs> little bits of pasta, uh, sand, whatever you want. Play-Doh could be in there. Um, or you could have a, your whiteboard or a chalkboard or your journal to practice writing our letter of the week. You, a uh, umbrella. Mrs. Surrett is going to be making a craft umbrella. And um, here are some umbrellas that I have little, let's see how many views I have today. Not as many as I've had before. You, a uh, umbrella. You, a uh, umbrella. Here's our big, you, a uh, umbrella. Okay. So how do we write it? It's kind of fun. It's almost like using a slide. Let me get my big hand. When we do our U A umbrella, we're gonna start at the top like we always do. And we're gonna go wee down the slide, back up. Oh, look how high it brought us all the way back to the top. Are you ready to do it again? Wee! Here we go again. Wee! Back up. Here we go again. Whee! So when you get this page at home, you can color your umbrellas. There's two of them open and shut, right? And so we don't open the umbrella in the house, right? Because it's bad luck, they say. Only outside do we open an umbrella. All right, here we go. We're going to write it now on our whiteboard. I'll be right back. Okay, friends, I'm back with you. Oh umbrella again I'm gonna show you the one here so the capital and small look very similar here's the big capital and then the small is smaller but this one has a little tail at the end okay so here we go now I'm upside down so bear with me friends so 
So here's our U, our big U. Down, remember we go wee back up, okay? Here we go, writing it lowercase. Same thing, we're gonna go back down and make a little tail. You see it? Big and little. I'm gonna take my tracer, and I'm gonna try that again. Wee! And go wee! That one's a little trickier. Still easy, right? All the way up and around, and then back down in a little tail. So you could try both of those. You, a, uh, umbrella. You, a, uh, umbrella. You, a, uh, umbrella. Okay? Back for number 19. Do you think I can ring this bell 19 times and you could count with me? Are you ready? One. Can you see my bell? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, I think he's tired. We've pooped him out. Let's put him over here. So number 19, right? I've got to get my eraser. Hold on, hey, I'm back with my clean board. Now 19, we're almost to 20, right? So 19 is a one and a nine together. So how do we make our one, do you remember? Number one is like a stick, a straight line that is very quick. That's our number one, right? So we're gonna write the number one first in our number 19. One line down, right? Number nine is a little trickier. A loop and a line, that makes a line. A loop and a line, that's what makes a nine. A loop and a line, that's what makes a nine. Okay? A loop and a line, that's what makes a nine. Oops, my nine is a little smaller than my one. <laughs> okay? So here we go again. This time I'm going to use my tracer, my big Mickey hand. One line down, stick, number one. Next to it is the nine for 19. One loop around, and one line down. That's what makes a 19. 19, okay? Friends, I'm back with our shape. It's a pentagon. This is a black pentagon, okay? And this little guy is holding the pentagon. I didn't get a chance to talk about it in our meeting. The Pentagon, remember, has five sides and five points. You ready? One, two, three, four, five. Let's count the points. One, two, three, four, five. Pentagon is tricky to make. You should get out your journal and a pencil maybe and an eraser, okay? Or a whitewash board. Let me know if you can see it. So I'm gonna start at the top again to make our pentagon, which kind of looks like a house too, right? So we're gonna go one line over, ready? One line down. I'm trying to do this upside down, friends. One line over again, one line up, and then that kind of looks like a roof, right? See how it kind of looks like a house? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, pentagon, p, pentagon, okay? You could color yours in if you're doing it in your journal. You could make it into a house with a front door and windows if you wanted to. That's kind of like what the house I grew up kind of looks like. The doorknob, maybe you make a front step. Maybe there's some rocks going out to the driveway. We could be creative, friends. There's a chimney. There's some smoke coming out of the chimney. Uh-oh, should we draw the shingles on the house? What do you think? We'll draw a little shingles. And maybe there's some board on the side of our house. You could try this at home too, friends or you could just color it in, okay? I'm just going quickly. 
and maybe our glass has window panes in the glass. You could do your house whatever color you'd like. Okay, friends? By the way, were you able to think about what you might like to do if you ever became the president? What would be the first thing you would do? Maybe you could journal about that too. I'd love to know. Here comes our next craft. Friends, today for my uh, sort of process art craft, we're going to do a mindfulness St. Patrick's Day craft. So you're just gonna need a few things from your craft box and your craft center. I hope you have some green construction paper or it can be white, it can be any kind of paper. And you might want some green crayons or green markers um, and maybe your black marker uh, and maybe a pencil. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make shamrocks and we're going to be mindful about things that we're grateful for, okay? Later on in this video, we're going to read a story and it's all about how to fill your bucket. And we can fill our bucket in a couple of ways. So this is one way, being grateful, okay? And being thankful for things that you have and being mindful of those things. So I'll be back with all of the things I need. So why don't you take a break and you go get the things you need to do this, all right? Hi again, friends. You've seen me a million times today. Um, listen, so this project is super easy. Remember how we made hearts for Valentine's Day? Making a shamrock is very similar. Wanna know why? Because we're making hearts again to make the shamrock. I made three hearts. I had different colored green paper, so I did that. Now, if you're using white paper, you can color in your hearts green, different colored greens or the same green. You can use crayon, marker, pencils, whatever you have, okay? And all you're going to do after we've done that is we're going to take our glue stick. I forgot to mention you need a glue stick and scissors also. So we have our marker or our construction paper, or you could even journal it and draw it, okay? If you wanted to do that, you could also just draw your shamrock, shamrock and fill it in. Okay, so after we've done that, we're just gonna glue our three hearts together. But first we're gonna draw on them, so I don't wanna do it yet, but I just wanted to kind of show you how easy it is to make a shamrock. Now you could put the pieces in front like this if you wanted to. And now we've made a shamrock once we've glued it together. And at the bottom, we put the stem. Do you see how we're going to assemble it after? So all you should have are three hearts. I used different colors and then I cut out a stem, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to write, mom and dad will probably have to help you with this, um, with a pencil what sort of things you like about yourself, what you're grateful for, what you're happy about on each of these pieces, okay? It's a mindfulness shamrock. So once you've written out those things, I'm gonna go do that now, then we glue it all together and we hang it up so that we remember when we're upset or when we're, our bucket, buckets are not full, we remember the things that are that make us happy about ourselves, about our lives, and about our friendships. Whatever it is, we have a reminder, okay? So I'll come back with my things and then we'll do it together. See you in a minute. Okay, my friends, so I'm done. After I had all materials, that was the first step, getting all the materials. Second step was cutting out the three hearts and the stem. Uh, the Third step was that I wrote down all of the things that I wanted to be mindful about. Um, things that help you, that remind you basically is what it means of what you can do and what makes you happy also. It's like things you can do to help yourself like if you're sad or upset or if you're forgetting about things. These are all big concepts having to do with feelings and um, sort of being grateful, okay? sort of like an all wrapped up kind of thing that we've been talking about when we talked about kindness, when we're talking about filling buckets, which you'll hear about at the end of this. It's also just talking about, um, you know, that we're lucky. So shamrocks represent the idea that we're lucky 
It's a lucky sort of symbol. Supposedly, if you find a four leaf clover, then you're really lucky. Okay, so here's how my shamrock came out. I don't know if you can see it from there. So I glued the three hearts together. You can do that first if you wanna make sure everything fits in. And then I put the stem down the middle. Okay, friends, so this is what I wrote on mine. So it gives you kind of an idea. This is not a black or white kind of thing. This is sort of gray area, but it'll give you a better idea if I read it. So I wrote, I can call a friend when I would like to laugh and have fun. I have great friends in my life. I also, being creative, inventive, and positive, create happiness and peace for me. So it gives you two examples of what kinds of things to sort of, sort of be mindful about. Then the other heart says, I have a wonderful job working with children. I enjoy their smiling faces and watching them learn and become friends together. On my other heart, it says I have a beautiful family, a warm home, and food on my table. So sometimes it's the simple things, and the friends, that we should be grateful and thankful for. Health, love, that kind of thing. And then the last thing on my stem, it says, if I am worried, I can read a book or listen to music. So it sort of reminds you, let's say you're upset that day, these are some things I can do to help myself, right? so that eventually my bucket's full and then I can help others too. Make sense? Okay, we are all about the, the bucket filling when we get to story time. Hope you enjoyed that little project. I hope it wasn't too complicated. You can make it as simple as you'd like. You could just talk about it. It doesn't have to be a full out project. It's just an idea so that you can refer back to it. And it's fun to hang it up. I'm gonna go hang it up on my line right behind me right now. Okay, thanks friends. Hello my friends. Welcome back to Crafty Wednesday. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, so we are happy to be back and I cannot wait to show you my you. Remember we did you, I believe a couple of weeks ago at Mrs. Um, Demucci with our lively letters and we did you for uh, uh, umbrella. It's like a, like a uh, uh sound. Or even it could be unicorn or uh, umbrella. Depends on the what the word is with the U in the front of it. So this week I sent you guys your U, a pink piece of paper, um, your big blue piece of paper. I'm gonna use the small one for me. Uh, oops, a little um, umbrella because we're gonna make an umbrella. And this is the um, handle when you hold your umbrella. This will be the top of the umbrella and some raindrops. So what you need to do first is I want you to take your U and put it upside down. It's like a little hat. You put it upside down and you're going to take your pink paper. See how it has a little curved spot here? And you're going to match it the bottom half to your bottom half here. So it's going to look like, oops, it's going to look like this. So you're gonna glue that on. You're gonna do that first before you put it onto your blue paper. So I'm gonna put some glue on the back of my um, U, and it's upside down. Oops. And that, that way, when you put the, I don't know how far up I have to go here. Let me see. You know, maybe I'll this way. down but you're just really making it even on the bottom so you, know, you won't see the pink on the sides or anything like that maybe on the bottom a little bit mine's a little uneven but that's okay let's see so it'll look like this so it has a straight bottom like that and it's upside down then you're gonna take your big piece of blue paper and you're gonna put this you're gonna put glue on the back of here and you're gonna glue it on to your blue piece of paper. Oops. I'm getting a little mess. I hope everybody had a great vacation, some time in the snow. We have a lot of snow 
and uh, now it's been raining this week, but that's why I figured we'd do an umbrella for for the rain. You can't really use it in the rain now. But at least this way, you can have your little umbrella for in the house. Okay. So now it's on my blue piece of paper, and it's still upside down, even though the U goes like this. We're gonna do it upside down like that. Then you can take your little, oops, your little piece of brown paper that I gave you that's the top of your umbrella, and you can put it, um, well, I guess you can kind of lift it. If you want to lift the spot here, just kind of go up top like that. You can kind of stick it in between if you want, or you can put it behind, or you can put it on the back of the paper, whatever's easier. I actually got a little bit of glue on there. I didn't need to do that, but that's all right that off. So now you can do your little raindrops and you can put the raindrops, uh, they're just kind of like decorations, but you want to do it like this because um, I think when the water drops it looks like coming down. So you put them kind of all over your umbrella. You can do as many as you want. I sent you I think five. You can do um, wherever you want, but um, leave some space for, oops, for a line. I'm gonna show you in a second on how to make that. Oops. Um, let's go upside down like that. We can do this. There we go. So I just did this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a marker and you're just gonna make a line like in the middle here, you're gonna go right down. It's just for some decoration. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the edges here, right here, and right here. So, you're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. Make a line there, line there. Just to give it a little bit of definition. Last, you wanna put on your um, handle, I guess. So you can put it that on the back. So you can make it as long as you want. You can either do it like, you know, like maybe like this short, or you can make it long. Like, yeah, however long you want to do it, it doesn't really matter. So you want to put it, um, some glue on the back of one. So it can either go this way or it can go that way. It doesn't matter. Whatever way you want to do it. So you're going to put some glue on the back of it um, to where you want to put it. So I'm only putting it a little bit on it halfway maybe. You want to put it in the middle. Try to, try to put it in the middle. And then that's what it is, see? And here is your U umbrella for umbrella. Hope you enjoyed it on this maybe rainy day or um, it's been raining but we had a lot of snow. I hope you had a great vacation and I'm happy that we are back. <laughs> Thanks, friends. Are you ready for a little rhyme time? Here we go. Remember we rhymed with pug? Let's see if we can rhyme again with pug. Uh, uh is in this, it's the sound in the middle. P starts uh, g, p, uh, g, pug, squeeze it together. You ready for all the words that rhyme with pug? Rug, ug. Hug, jug, lug, mug, dug, bug, tug, chug, slug. What's this one? Drug. What's this one? I can't see backwards. Plug. <laughs> snug. I'm a bug. I'm a snug bug in a rug. Do you know any more rhymes with pug? Uh, uh, ug, p, uh, g. Pug, squeeze it together. Okay, friends, good job. Hello, my friends. Are you ready for story time today? Here we go, ready? Everybody take a seat, take a seat, take a seat. Everybody take a seat on the floor. Not on the ceiling, not on the door. Everybody take a seat on the floor. Are you ready? 
with your favorite drink and your favorite snack or your favorite snuggly or your blanket or your, your rug, whatever you want to do to get ready for your story time. Are you ready for today's story? It's, um, we, usually when we're in school, we have um, another assistant with us besides Mrs. Surrett and myself. Um, we usually have Mrs. Harper, and this came from Mrs. Harper's house. She loves this story, and so we do too. It's called, Have You Filled a Bucket Today? Okay, it's by Carol McLeod and illustrated by David Messing. Have you filled your bucket today? All day long, everyone in the whole wide world walks around carrying an invisible bucket. Can you guys carry your invisible buckets? Make believe you're holding one. You can't see it, but it's there. There's the bucket. There's everyone carrying their invisible buckets around. You have a bucket, each member of your family has a bucket, your grandparents, friends, and neighbors all have a bucket. Everyone carries an invisible bucket. Your bucket has one purpose only. Its purpose is to hold your good thoughts and good feelings about yourself. Think about what you feel good about inside. And that's what will go in your bucket. When you feel very happy and good, when your bucket is full and you feel very sad and lonely, when your bucket is empty. So when you feel very happy and good, your bucket's full. When you feel kind of sad and empty and lonely, it's empty. She's sad. She's happy. Other people feel the same way too. They're happy when their buckets are full and they're sad when their buckets are empty. It's great to have a full bucket and this is how it works. You need other people to fill your bucket and other people need to, you to fill theirs. So how do you fill a bucket? You fill a bucket when you show love to someone when you say or do something kind, or even when you give someone a smile. That's being a bucket filler. A bucket filler is a loving, caring person who says or does nice things that make others feel special. When you make someone feel special, you are filling a bucket. But you can also dip into a bucket and take out some good feelings. You dip into a bucket when you make fun of someone, when you say or do mean things, or when you ignore someone. That's being a bucket dipper. A bully is a bucket dipper. A bucket dipper says or does mean things that make others feel bad. I'm sure none of my friends in my class are bucket dippers. You wouldn't make anybody feel sad, would you? Many bucket dippers have an empty bucket. They think they can fill their own bucket by dipping into someone else's. That'll never work. You never fill your own bucket when you dip into somebody else's bucket. But guess what? When you fill someone's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. You feel good when you help others feel good. All day long, we are either filling up or dipping into each, other, each other's book, buckets by what we say and what we do. Try to fill a bucket and see what happens. You love your mom and dad, why not tell them you love them? You can even tell them why. Your caring words will fill their buckets right up. for smiles to light up their faces. You will feel like smiling too. A smile is a good clue that you have filled a bucket. If you practice, you'll become a great bucket filler. Just remember that everyone carries an invisible bucket and think of what you can say or do to fill it. Here are some ideas. 
ideas for you. You could smile and say hi to the bus driver. He has a bucket too. You could invite the new kid at school to play with you. You could write a thank you note to your teacher. You could tell your grandpa that you like to spend time with him. There are many ways to fill a bucket. Bucket filling is fun and easy to do. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. It doesn't cost any money. It doesn't take too much time. And remember, when you fill someone else's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. When you're a bucket filler, you make your home, your school, and your neighborhood a better place to be. Bucket filling makes everyone feel good. So why not decide to be a bucket filler today and every day? Just start each day by saying to yourself, I'm going to, to do something to fill someone's bucket today. And at the end of each day, ask yourself, did I fill a bucket today? Yes, I did. That's the life of a bucket filler. And that's you. I'd like to add my own thought about this. You can fill your own bucket by yourself too. You don't always need others to fill your bucket. You know that inside of you, that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Confidence comes from within and knowing that, you know what, I might not know how to do that just yet, but I could figure it out and do it all by myself eventually with practice and hard work. So we also are responsible for filling our own buckets. Sometimes we fill each other's buckets not even knowing, but it starts with each one of us and how we feel inside, okay? So it's sort of like a give and take within a relationship but we can do just fine filling our own buckets with how we feel about ourselves, knowing that we have everything we need to achieve. Okay, friends? So start with filling your own bucket first, and then when you have a little overflow of your bucket, spread the wealth and kindness that way, okay? I kind of like these buckets because they kind of look like St. Patrick's Day buckets. Hope you enjoyed that book today, and I'll see you next time. Ciao for now. Ice cream today. Let's do this preschool style. You ready for a little wrap? See you later, alligator. Gotta run, skeleton. See you soon, baboon. After a while, crocodile. Adios, hippos. Got a gold buffalo out the door. Dinosaur got a truck, baby duck. I do cockatoo, chop, chop, lollipop. Better swish, jellyfish. Be sweet, parakeet. Bye bye, butterfly. Got a scat, kitty cat. Blow a kiss, goldfish. Toodaloo, kangaroo. Give a hug, ladybug. Chow, chow, brown cow. Hit the trail, tiny snail. In an hour, sunflower. In the morn, unicorn. Better shake, rattlesnake. Thumbs up, silly buck. Gotta scram, little lamb. Can't stay, blue jay. Take care, polar bear.